Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Avery Rube and I'm here to talk to you a little bit about extensive reading, uh, which is an ugly term, unfortunately, it's a very scientific and ugly term for something that's really amazing. So let's get into it. Um, extensive reading uh, is about second language learning, but the best way to understand it is to take a look at something else and then compare it to second language learning. So we're going to take a look at how do we learn how to drive. Um, do we just go on the highway immediately, go straight to A and go on the highway? No, that's not how we learn to drive. In fact, the first thing that we'll probably do is read uh, the driver's manual. This driver's manual uh, has a lot of pages. It'll explain to you a lot of different things. You'll be able to maybe, from reading that, explain to other people what these things are. And then slowly but surely, maybe you'll get a little bit of confidence and you'll be able to start driving maybe in a parking lot first. Uh, after you do a little of that, you might move up to a suburban street in C. You'll move over to D, uh, a downtown street with not too much traffic. And then slowly but surely, after some days, some weeks, some months, maybe even years, you'll be able to drive on the highway. Uh, why do we separate um, these uh, learning to drive into different steps? Well, it's because we are trying to master two different types of knowledge in order to perform a an activity. The first type is called declarative knowledge. Declarative knowledge is the conscious knowledge of facts. So, for instance, in learning to drive, uh, what is the brake, what is a red light, and what is turning right into our, uh, you know, into in, into a street. All of those things we can explain. We can explain with words. We can write those things down. That's frequently what comes from uh, the driver's manual. Uh, in terms of procedural knowledge, that is the optimization of many smaller activities into one bigger activity. So, for instance, when we're going to take a right, we have to know how to press on the brake. We have to know how to turn the steering wheel. We have to know where to look. We have to know what to avoid so that we can take a right turn into our favorite restaurant with the music going, maybe with someone talking to us at the same time, with a police car behind us. All those things need to be automatized. As you can see, procedural knowledge takes a lot of work uh, in order to automatize these small things. It takes a lot of work. If we look at the iceberg analogy here, it's the major part of the learning, and the declarative knowledge is the less, uh, takes less time. So if we go back to uh, the second slide, we look at learning to drive. Uh, there we've got uh, the, the, the driver's manual, which is the declarative knowledge, and then E, C, D, and A. All those are automatization uh, processes, and those are the things that we need to uh, learn in order to develop procedural knowledge. Now if we go into reading as a second language, uh, what we see here is um, a, a very similar uh, breakdown in terms of procedural knowledge and declarative knowledge. So the first thing we have to be able to do is we have to be able to recognize letters and words. Uh, that's easy if we're learning a language with the same alphabet. That's difficult if we're learning uh, a language with a different alphabet. Uh, so Chinese to French is a lot more difficult than English to French. Uh, lexical access is simply vocabulary. When we see a word, are we able to recognize what it means? Morphosyntactic knowledge is simply grammar. Are we able to understand the grammar um, of what uh, we are understanding? So if those things are have to be conscious and we have to think about those things, we're not really going to understand too much of what we are reading. So for instance, if we look at Il marche dans la rue en écoutant la radio, Il, okay, I know what il means, it means he. Marche means walk, down, in. What does écoutant, A-N-T? Oh, I don't know exactly what that means. Uh, I'm not really sure 100% what this means, but I understand some of it. The problem is, is that if we have to think about these elements, we are not really reading. We are uh, thinking about reading. But once we can proceduralize this or automatize all these processes, letter, word recognition, lexical access, and morphosyntactic knowledge, then we start to read. Everything we read becomes a mental representation in our head. It is similar to watching a movie. We read and the words become mental representations, they become images in our head. So it's really, really fun. So what is our challenge then? Well, one of our challenges is how do we transform this conscious knowledge of letters, vocabulary, and grammar into something that is automatized? How do we transform declarative knowledge into procedural? That is a good question, isn't it? How would we do that? 
Well, in terms of reading, we have two types of reading to do that. The first one is called intensive reading, which is uh, what we normally do in a traditional classroom. We read uh, texts that are difficult. They're frequently authentic texts. We look at the form. So we are looking at vocabulary. We're looking at grammar. We're looking at words. Uh, and we are d developing declarative knowledge. So we're developing our conscious knowledge of the language. We're very much like a, an inspector. We're looking at the clues to try to reshape the, um, the, the, the story. Uh, another type of reading, and this goes back to this term that we used earlier, extensive reading, which again is not the most sexy of words, but it is applicable um, in terms of the science of second language acquisition. This is when we focus simply on meaning. So we're going to read books that are simplified. Why? Well, because that way we don't have to worry about what all the words mean because we know what the words mean. And what are we trying to do? We're trying to develop procedural knowledge. It means we're trying to automatize uh, our language processes, recognition of letters and words, vocabulary access, and grammar. We're trying to automatize that so that we can read more quickly and more effectively. So it's very much like a, a propeller in a plane. We want that propeller to turn really, really quickly. Uh, if it stops to look up a word every two words, four, six words, we are not automatizing anything. We are simply uh, concentrating on the form and we're not concentrating on the meaning. We want to concentrate on meaning more. So how uh, does this uh, compare to, say, learning how to play tennis? Well, it's very similar. Uh, the question I'd ask to you is, is, would you like to play against Roger Federer, who is the number one tennis player, or one of the best tennis players in the world? Uh, would you like to play against him? You might like to play against him for five minutes or ten minutes, but after about ten minutes, it becomes quite boring. You don't want to play against this person because he hits the ball too hard, he wins points too easily, he is just way better than you are. But what happens if I asked you, would you like to play with all of these people? Would you like to start off with someone that's at your level, play with them a lot, and then every once in a while move up a level and see if you can play at this new level? That is very similar to what we're talking about extensive reading and intensive reading. The idea is, is that the extensive reading is when we're playing someone at our level and we're practicing a lot with them, and then every once in a while we're going to want to read uh, texts that are harder and move up levels. So slowly but surely, we can move up and and get to play against people who are better and better and better. We can improve. So how do we do this in um, learning a second language? We read what are called leveled books or easy reading books uh, and they have certain vocabulary levels. So we find what our vocabulary level is, we start reading a book in that level and we read a lot of books in that level. We read about 10 books in that level and then we read another book in a, in a level that's above. So we go from level 1, which is about 400 to 700 words, to level 2, which is 700 to 1200. So slowly but surely we'll move up levels and we'll get better and better and better. Uh, how do we transition between levels? That's a very good question. We want to move up slowly. We want to read about 10 levels, or 10 books in a level and then move up. We want to reread books multiple times. That's very, very helpful. It might seem counterintuitive, but it's actually scientifically proven to help. Uh, and as teachers, we can help you to move up levels. How do we learn new words? Can we use a dictionary? I would say yes, you can use a dictionary when you're transitioning between levels, but when you're reading at a specific level and you've been at that level for a little while, don't use a dictionary. We don't want to use the dictionary because the dictionary is the declarative knowledge, it's not the procedural. Uh, what are the principles of extensive reading? Uh, there are 10 of them. They basically say we want to read easier things, we want to read more quickly, we only want to read for fun, we don't want this to be a point related or grade related because then it becomes an obligation and you don't want to do it and the only way you're going to read a lot is if you like to read. Uh, and fi finally, you want to you want to look to your teacher as a role model. I read in French every single day for uh, 20 minutes. Uh, I would recommend you do the same uh, and the reason I'm recommending it is because I do it myself. Uh, finally, if you do all of these things, if you read 20 to 30 minutes a day, you read 10 books in a level and you move up, you are going to uh, have a lot of gains, statistically significant gains in your second language learning. Uh, some of them are related to reading and some of them are actually related to other things. So for instance, you're going to read faster, you're going to appreciate reading more, you're going to understand your reading more, you're also going to understand grammar. That 
is interesting that by reading you understand grammar better well why because everything on the page has grammar and the grammar on the pages that you're reading is perfect so you're going to be reading perfect grammar that's a good way to learn you're also going to improve your vocabulary that's normal but interestingly enough two of the last studies uh, explain that by reading a lot you actually improve your oral production so the quality of your oral production goes up well, that's interesting. How is that possible? Well, one reason is is that when you read, you actually pronounce the words in your head, and it's like your body is preparing to speak. So that's what your body does. It reads, or your brain does, it reads, and it improves your oral production. A writing quality, same thing. By reading, I can get better at writing. That's something that seems counterintuitive or might seem a little bizarre, but it's actually been proven to be uh, the case. The last thing I'd like to leave you with before you go off and start to read or not start to read, because remember, it's your choice. Uh, reading is fuel. For you to be able to produce, be able to drive your car, be able to turn your linguistic motor, you need a lot of fuel. And if you don't have that fuel, you can't take off. So reading and listening are essential. But remember, when you read, you want to read at the right octane level. You don't want to be reading... Uh, and using gasoline for a race car if you're driving a car uh, that is not a race car. You want to be reading at the right octane level. You want to be reading at your correct level. So that's something uh, that you need to talk with your teacher uh, and get the right level. Or you can do it yourself. Just read and whenever you feel like you understand almost all the words on the page, 95% of the words on the page, that's the right level. So. Uh, this presentation is done. I hope I didn't go too fast. If I did re-listen re or, or ask me questions, you can send me emails at rube at vanniercollege.qc.ca. I'd love to get your feedback, and I hope uh, that you start reading easy books today because it's going to make your life better. Uh, good luck and um, easy read. <laughs>